Hello, my beautiful babies, and welcome to God Emperor Dune Club Session 3. So excited to be back on Arrakis with you guys. Um, so we are reading from this book in particular, uh, but no worries if you're reading from another copy of this book, uh, you need to read the last sentence of the last chapter is precisely but if you are reading from this particular book, this encompasses pages 141 to 226. So it's, uh, all right, let's get into it. Chapter 16, the peregrination begins. <laughs> so we just had the Met Gala and now we're having the Met Gala essentially for, uh, on Arrakis, we have the peregrination to the festival city of On for their decentennial party, where it's just a big everyone celebrates Lido party. You know, it's the big Lido party, and so he starts in his surreer, and then he's got all of his courtiers, and he's got some fish speakers and stuff like that, and his like main man Maneo and uh, Duncan, and they're all following him on the cart. So they all walk their asses all the way to On. And all of the courtiers are dressed in their finest. They all wear these like silly little festival outfits. And uh, <laughs> Leto can tell that Duncan is like, this is so whack. Like this is, these people are so whack. But he's like thinking to himself, like, honestly, this is like less annoying and stupid than, I, than I've seen it in past years. Like this is less stupid. Um, and uh you know at one point while they're where they're on the road Lido stops and he and Maneo discuss the new Duncan uh and we also learn fun fact that Lido has multiple hearts that are transforming into something unknown so not only is his brain turned into all these little ganglia nodes throughout his body he has multiple hearts that are in the process of still transforming <laughs> And, uh, and I love that uh, he also, uh, Leto talks to Duncan a little bit and discusses the old Dune times with him. Uh, and he shows him, you know, being pointing out like where all the old things was on Arrakis. He's like, oh yeah, that's, that's the shield wall, you know, that, that Paul blasted through over there. And it's like almost gone. And he's like, what happened to it? And he's like, look at this road. Like I built this, I, we took it apart. We made a road out of it. He even shows them the Idaho River, which they both kind of get a little laugh out of. And uh, it was really cute where he's kind of relating the Dune times him and him and Duncan were reminiscing. And uh, while this is going on, Mene was thinking about his defection from the rebellion when he was a kid to the service, to Leto's service, uh, and how that was due to his fascination with the God Emperor, who never ceased to surprise and amaze and could never be reliably predicted. Uh, after they get back on the move, uh, Maneo and Duncan start talking and they're discussing the cart and like there's wheels on it, but there's also suspensor bulbs underneath it. Um, and it's like, so, but he's using the wheels, but like he can like suspensor it. So he can like kind of float around on that bitch if he wants to. And, uh, and Duncan's like, how does this, how does he drive that thing? And like Maneo's like, I don't even like, nobody really knows, but like, I think maybe it's like psychically driven. <laughs> like we're not entirely sure. Um, yeah, like it take, it's crazy. This thing, I love the Royal cart. Uh, then they, so they get moving again. He seals his little, his little bubble chamber. I love that he's got like a little bubble chamber to keep out the moisture because since he is part sandworm, he really hates that moisture in the air. Uh, so, um, so, you know, they're, they're going. Duncan is sensing some danger, but Maneo orders him to fall back in with the guards. Next up, we got chapter 17, the Bene Gesserit arrive. So we have the, the Reverend Mother's Antiac and Loisael. I may be butchering these names. I've never heard them spoken. And they are lodging in a musty ass, small, shitty, dingy room on the absolute edge of the festival city's embassy quarter. Their communication devices don't even work and their audience with the God Emperor has been moved from third position to the last position, the very last. So they're like, what the fuck, man? Like this is just not, this, this is not looking good because at this festival, this is where uh, the spice allotments are given. So every, there's all these like different people 
who uh, have a meeting with Leto and he's like, okay, like here's your spice allotment for the year. And this is where you can kind of like try to barter with him and, and say like, hey, can we have this? And usually he's probably like, no. So things aren't looking great for them. A messenger girl arrives and she is told to re re uh, repeat the temporary superior of the Ixian embassy, Othwi Yake's words to Antiac uh, and Lucille, Lucielle, Lucielle, she comes in too. And this Ixian ambassador says, tell the Reverend Mothers that by tonight the empire will be rid of its god emperor and we will strike him today before he reaches on. We cannot fail. And he also gives, this is the real message, he gives a secret message of the fingers saying we have been invaded by face dancers and we cannot move. Uh, so the face dancers are, have totally infiltrated the Ixian embassy. Uh, Antiac and Luceel discuss, but they, and they do not think the, t t the Leilaxu will be successful in this attempt to uh, get rid of the god emperor. And they wonder if the rebel Siona could be a part of their plan. Also, another fun fact, Antiac is a secret Mentat. So even though Mentats have been banned, the Bene Gesserit still kind of train a couple of them, you know, to keep it going, but they just like keep it on the hush hush. And they know from a guild report, the, the Reverend Mothers, they know from a guild report that Siona can conceal herself and her actions from prescience, that she fades from view. And this is from the guild uh, guild navigators like they have some prescience and so from these guys they're like hey like this person fades from our view we can't always see what she's doing uh, or her actions uh, but they do not know if she fades from Leto's sight as well and they decide after talking about it they decide to warn a fish speaker guard of the impending attack so they're like you know what this is let's just go ahead and tell them maybe maybe like we'll get score some brownie points if we can tell them about the attack that's coming up uh and our next chapter chapter 18 worm sign we're back on the road there's more moisture in the air and so the worm has been very much present today he's very aggravated Lido's very aggravated uh he asks Maneo if the Bene Gesserit have been informed of their updated schedule which is yes and do they still want an embassy a permanent embassy on the planet and yes, they still do, but we still tell, told them no. So even though they want an, a permanent embassy on the planet, he's like, no, I don't want anything. I don't want these fucking ladies on my planet messing my shit up. Uh, Leto starts going off about why he abhors the Bene Gesserit religious pretensions. And Maneo is like, oh no, like these poor Bene Gesserit are in for it. Like they're in for it today. Like they do not like being preached to. Leto's in a bad fucking mood. This is not going to go well for them. Like, this is just going to be a nightmare. He's kind of sweating it. And I, I, Leto, like, really leans into religion in these next quotes. And I just, I, I, I'm just going to read you all of these quotes because they're great. Uh, Leto says, religion always leads to rhetorical despotism. It leads to self-fulfilling prophecy and justification for all manner of obscenities. It shields evil behind walls of self-righteousness, which are proof against all arguments against the evil. It feeds on deliberately twisted meanings to discredit opposition. The Jesuits called that securing your power base. It leads directly to hypocrisy, which is always betrayed by the gap between actions and explanations. They never agree. Ultimately, it rules by guilt because hypocrisy brings on the witch hunt and the demand for scapegoats. Power bases are very dangerous because they attract people who are truly insane, people who seek power only for the sake of power. Do you understand? In the shadow of every religion lurks a Torquemada. He was an obscenity. He made living torches out of people who disagreed with him. And then Maneo, oh my God, I was like, oh shit, he's wilding when he's like, yeah, like like you did with the historians who angered you, like like you did when you set those people on fire who wrote those histories that you didn't like. And uh, Alina's like, do you question? Are you questioning me right now? And Maneo's like, no, Lord, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just, I'm just making an observation. It's no big deal. 
Uh, and he's like, those historians died peacefully, okay? Not one of them felt the flames. All right, they were asleep when it happened. Uh, Torquemada delighted in commending to his God the agonized screams of his burning victims. So I am not like him. I may have set some people on fire, but I did it in a really chill way. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, and I mean, when you think about like what he's like, a lot of it's like, if you think about the Inquisition, you know, where it was like, oh, we were, the people were, uh, the religious institution uh, was so concerned with people's uh, soul, whether they were going to hell or not, that like anything, you could use any excuse to do anything to anyone to try to secure and make sure that they were gonna they were gonna go to heaven you know they were just and, it, and so they ended up torturing people burning people all sorts of terrible things were done in the name of uh saving people's souls you know and they and they really genuinely thought like oh i'm doing the right thing like i'm what could be worse you know like i'm i'm fucking helping these people out and so that's what he's talking about and uh and so leto starts brooding Maneo is stressing and Leto tells him, do not try to force an understanding of my ways, Maneo. Let understanding come of itself. And Maneo's like, I will try, Lord. And Leto's like, no, don't try. That's what I just said to you. I said, don't try. I said, don't try to force an understanding. Like, shut up. Like, and like, Maneo's just like, oh, I'm so fucked right now. Like, he's so angry. Like, everything I say is just pissing him off. Um... And then Leto tells Maneo to hold off on telling everyone that there will be no spice allotment changes. Uh, he's changed his mind. And uh, also, I think it's really cute that Leto loves that everyone keeps bribing Maneo. And he, like, encourages this behavior. And he wants Maneo to, like, kind of draw them out and see how high they will go with their bribes to him. <laughs> like, just for funsies, which I think is super cute. Um, and, uh, he asked if House Carino's offered a bribe. They have, uh, and then he's like, you know what, let's just, let's use this as an excuse to test the Duncan. Let's have him kill the Carino. Just take him out. Like, kill the Carino. Uh, it is known that Melange can extend human life. Let it also be known that the spice can shorten your life. It's like, damn, daddy. Like, he is, like, really not having it today. Uh, and Maneo is just feeling like a bitter Betty. He remembers the time that Leto showed him his the crazy spice hoard, and when he revealed that one day he will go back into the sand and become the source of the spice, and he will produce a hybrid sand trout, a prolific breeder that will turn Arrakis back into Dune in like 300 years' time with new sandworms that will have animal awareness that makes spice more dangerous to seek and to keep and he also casually mentions that most people on the planet will die. Only the hardiest and the most brutal will survive. So, uh, like, get, get ready for that. And uh, then they talk about Siona, and he thinks it's cute how when she was growing up and little, she used to watch him like a hawk. And thinking that he, like, didn't know, you know, like, thinking that he didn't notice. But he totally knew that she was watching him. And he tells Maneo that she doesn't offend, like, Sayona doesn't offend me. You know, you need to calm down. Uh, to have a new, to be surprised, to have a new thing occur. That is what I desire most. New, isn't that a radiant, wonderful word? And he's just like, if you say so, my lord, I don't know what the fuck you're talking, poor Maneo. He's just like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Okay. And he, and Leto tells him, your child is worth almost any price to me. There may be one among her companions. She might love you. You hate her rebel companions. Maybe there's somebody in there that she loves. You know, like, it's cool. It's fine. You need to calm down. And he's like, love a companion? Uh, what about the Duncan? What, I thought you guys were going to breed the Duncan. And he's like, I said love, not breed. I said love somebody. I did not say breed. Okay, that's a different thing. And then Mano was like, oh, no. I pissed him off again. Like, he just keeps just, like, like just walking to these fucking landmines. And, uh, and then Leto turns on him and he's like, you think I have no tender thoughts? You think I have no memories of love and breeding? This body may never have known such tenderness, but all the memories are mine, okay? All the memories are mine. I've got the memories. I've got, I've got thousands of memories of breeding and being in love a, a billion times. So don't talk to me about it. You think I'm some freak and I don't know about it. I, f I fucking know about it. Uh, I really, I, I wish he had told him about his beef swelling, you know, like he should have, he'd be like, I had a beef swelling once, okay? I don't want to hear about it. 
<laughs> and uh, was like, I am in great danger. We are all in great danger. Like, this is going so poorly. Like, what the fuck? And Leto's like, you better listen to me. Like, your life fucking depends on it. Because it does. And he explains to him how part of him uh, is the worm and does things without logic. And such a reaction could cause your death. And the choice would not be mine. I could kill you. You're piss you're you're arousing the worm. The worm does whatever the fuck it wants. And if it kills you, that's not my fucking fault. It's not my problem. I didn't make that choice. And then he tests poor Mon poor Manea with a riddle and asks him why he thinks Leto doesn't fear the unknown. Why do I not fear the unknown? If you fuck this up, I might crush you with my worm body. What do you think, Maneo? The clock is ticking. And he's like, is it because your memories? And Lito's like, go on. You're, cl you're getting, you're warm. Keep going. And he's like, well, since you know everything, a surprise to you must be merely something new for you to know. Is that it? Don't kill me with your worm body. And he's like, yay, you got it. You got it, Maneo. Good job. I'm not going to crush you with my worm body. You did so good. And because you did so good, you get a prize. What do you want, baby? What do you want? Daddy will give you anything you want. Just name it. And uh, he asked to have Siona brought back to the Citadel from the Festival City of On. He wants to separate her from her rebel friends. And uh, <laughs> then uh, Leto's like, well, that might make me test her a little bit sooner. Like, is that okay with you? Like, if you do that? And Maneo's like, I don't care. She needs to be separated. Like, just bring her back to the Citadel. Like, I'm tired of this. Like, we, we can't have her doing this rebel shit. It's stressing me out too much. And the worm has subsided, but now Maneo is mad worried about the upcoming annoying museum Fremen that he okayed. So the museum fremen asked if they could have a petition on the road with Leto. And he said, okay. But now, you know, now he's like, oh my God, I almost got fucking killed by the worm. Like he, he's going to hate this. Like we can't, these museum fremen are coming and this is just going to be such a disaster. This poor guy, I feel like, I feel like the whole book should be called Poor Maneo. <laughs> you know, like he's just got so much shit to deal with. Uh, in our next chapter... We have Sister Shenoa, and uh, if you remember in our last session, session two, there was uh, like the, the Wellbreck abridgment where there was all these, it's kind of like a, you know, it was a little thing from the Bene Gesserit talking about all these different things that were going on, and it mentioned Sister Chenoa. And so now we get Sister Chenoa's account, and this was found amongst her papers after she had died, and it speaks of her conversation with Leto while on the peregrination that they're on right now. And she hid it because he told her to. He's like, look, like, y y people can find this later, but for right now, you got to keep this on the hush-hush. And so, and she's like, okay, well, I'll be true to the sisterhood. They'll find it when I'm dead. So I'll give them the information, but I'll also please Leto. So like, so I'm not betraying anybody. I'm not betraying Leto. I'm not betraying the sisterhood. They'll find it later. And so uh, she's on the peregrination. And at one point, Leto like asks her to come up and hang out. And she asks him how it was acquiring the memories of his ancestors. And he explains that he and Ganima were pre-born abomination, but used powerful alliances with their ancestors under the pharaonic Fer model to quell the mob and remain in control. Even though he hates that model, he <laughs> utilized it to, to not become abomination. And Sister Chenoa is very like, like, why are you answering me? Like, I mean, thank you for letting me know. But like, why? Because you never like talk to any of the Bene Gesserit. Like, why are you being so chill right now? Like, why are you talking to me? Lido says, well, because you're a good listener. Two, because I know you will obey me. And three, because I will never see you again. So she is a single serving friend. Uh, that That's a term I learned from Fight Club, which has never left me, where you just have this person that you just have this one interaction with. And you guys are just bros. You're just friends. It's like when you meet somebody while you're traveling and you know you're never going to see him again. And that's okay. And you just can be honest with them and just talk with them because they're a total stranger. And it's great. I love single serving friends. 
uh, they have such a cute relationship for sure. And he asks her to record his words because, you know, all the Bene Gesserits are taught how to record, like, and they can repeat everything you say word for word in the fucking tone that you said it in with like all the spaces and everything. Like they like, you just, they're human recorders. And he uh, goes into some hardcore pontificating. He pontificates pretty hard to Sister Chinua. Essentially, I'm going to paraphrase this. I'm going to just kind of shrink it down a little bit. When I'm gone, people will say that I was a tyrant. And that's fair. I'm not... That's fair. I was a tyrant. Uh, I'm the greatest tyrant there ever was. I mean, I'm not just any tyrant. I'm like the biggest tyrant. And I am recording my words because I know that they're that I'm going to be misunderstood. And eventually, I'm going to become a, a myth. I'm going to become a living myth. I'm going to become a a mythic god and even though I choose to teach you through my actions you know I, tr I try to teach you by showing you through my actions uh, rather than my words don't worry I still left you mad words I got my stolen journals like I got so much shit for you guys you know I got mad words for you to read uh, but beware of tyrants beware because tyrants of the future will try to use the words in my stolen journal to manipulate the masses for self-gain this never ends and if you want to know about the past you know i know you guys are going to read the stolen journals because you're going to want to know about the past but you really want to know about the past it lies wordlessly within you mic drop you know that's it boom and she's like is that it and he's like yeah that's it and she's like that sounds kind of like a last will and testament you know like what's up with that and uh and she also says uh you know, hey, you said that you're like not going to see me again. So, and this kind of sounds like you're getting ready to pack it in. So, does that mean that you're about to die? Like, are you getting ready to to take a dirt nap? And Lido laughs. He's like, ha ha ha. He's like, no, no, no. It's not me that's going to die. It's you that's going to die. Like, you crazy. You will not live to be a reverend mother. But it's cool. It's totally cool. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Like, you may not be a reverend mother, but you will essentially become a saint in the far future. And people are going to pray to you for intercession with me because you carry my words back to the Bene Gesserit. So you're, you're going to be a part of a myth. Okay, you're going to be famous. Okay, you're going to be like a saint, dog. So, like, it's fine. Like, don't even worry about it. And, um... And she's like, even, even though this guy just told this, this prescient being who would know tells me that I'm going to die and I will not live to be a reverend mother. Uh, we just instantly became BFFs and we experienced this bond and like this profound, and I, and I, I experienced this profound truth that I can't express just like Lita was telling me about, you know, when he says, you want to know about the past that lies wordlessly within you. It's like, I experienced this wordless thing with him that I just, I just, he just illustrated that whole thing with me. It was crazy. And yeah, like she just, they have a laugh together and it's like really positive. It's like super cool. And archivist note, she did die of a melange incompatibility trying to become a reverend mother. So when it was finally her turn to take the spice to transcend and, and become a reverend mother, it was she was just allergic to it. She didn't agree with her. And she fucking died. So he, you know, he was right. It happened. Uh, but yeah, they were just vibing. Yes, satanic Waldo. They were just vibing. And I just think it's super cute that they were they were fucking vibing. Um, so let's go back to the road. We're back on the road. Attack of the Face Dancers, chapter 20. The Fremen pop out and they start like singing and they pop out from like the gutters. They're like coming from the front. They're like singing and dancing and they're like waving their little fucking petitions around. And um, Leto's just having none of it. Like he orders Duncan to clear them out with his fish speakers. He's like, clear them out, clear them out. He uh, zips up his bubble. He's like, nope, nope. And then he starts driving faster and he's just like yelling, clear away, clear. And he's honking his horn at people. Like he's like, rah, rah, clear, away. get the fuck away, get away. I was like laughing so hard during this fucking, this whole scene just like cracks me up. He's like, I'm not dealing with this. Fuck off, fuck off. 
Uh, and surprise, these f museum fremen rip off their like little robes and they are a full detail of face dancers. These are the Leilaksu who we were told about, Bene Gesserit found out about. And they all turn in, they all have like Duncan Idaho uniforms on and they all turn into Duncan Idaho's. And, uh, and that's their, that's their form of attack. They're like, okay, we're all going to turn into Duncans and it's going to like really like throw off the fish speakers and like, we got laser guns and like, we're just, we're going to get this fucker. Like we're finally going to get this fucker. And the fish, uh, Lido's amused by all of this, mind you. He's like not even tripping on it. He's just like, whoa, you guys decided to turn into Duncans? That's wild. Y'all are crazy. And the fish speakers and the face dancers collide. They're all fighting. Leto uh, switches to suspenser mode, turns off the wheels. He starts running them over, which was also fucking awesome. He just, he's like, you know what? I'm going to back it up. I'm just going to run some of these motherfuckers over with my fucking cart. And I was like dying. I was just like, oh no. Then, uh, then he flies up out of the road, uh, out of range of the laser guns. He sees the laser gun starts going off and he's just like... I'm getting out of here. I ran some of them over. I'm going to fly over here and just like watch this shit unfold. He's like laughing too. He's like, he's on the hill watching all this, just like cracking the fuck up, having like the best time. And when the battle is over, Leto is like looking, he's surveying all of the dead. And at first he's bummed because all the people in the black Duncan uniforms are dead. He doesn't see any one Duncan still standing. So he's like, oh no, did Duncan get killed too? Like, is he down there? Is he one of the ones that's like dead? And, uh, and then he catches sight of a naked Duncan. Duncan decided to strip himself down to separate himself from the face dancers. And like, Leto starts fucking laughing again. He's like, oh no, that's my boy Duncan. Like, he's just like, that is the best way to deal with this fucking problem. He's like, I bet the face dancers didn't think about that. Like, all he had to do is take off his fucking uniform and then he would be different than all of them, which is hilarious. Uh, yes, the scribe. Duncan rocked out with his cock out. He didn't give a fuck. He was just like, whatever. Um, and all the face dancers are dead. Leto's entourage lost more than like 30 people in this kerfuffle. Uh, there's laser gun blasts all over the cart. One did hit Leto, but he's immune. As long as it hits his, like, worm body. If it hits him, like, in the face or his arm or his little flipper, then, like, those can get messed up. But, like, he didn't, it's fine. Like, he's totally cool. And, um, Duncan's like, hey, like, why don't we have shields? Like, what's the problem? Like, if we just had shields, it's like, this would have been fine. And he's like, no, we can't have shields. They're illegal. Because shields... Uh, they react with laser gun blasts. If a laser gun hits a shield, it's like a large uh, fusion bomb blast. It like it's like almost like a nuclear fucking bomb going off. Like if you have a laser gun hit a shield, so like we've outlawed that shit. And he's like, oh, I see your point. Yeah, that that makes sense. That we shouldn't have shields. Um, also, we find out fun fact that Leto has taken every every family atomics, all the great houses. They used to have their family atomics, and in fact. Paul used his family atomics to destroy the shield wall when he attacked the emperor and everybody. So, but yeah, he took all that shit. He's like, no, 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 you guys aren't allowed to have atomics anymore. <laughs> We're done with that. We're done with that. And um, yeah, so, uh, so yeah. And then, so Leto decides to play it cool. He's like, nobody's going to know. How would they know? Nobody's going to know. We're not going to let anyone know that we were attacked. Nobody's going to know. Uh, Maneo kind of feels like he's on blast for this incident because he didn't recognize the face dancer mimics of the museum Fremen that he talked to. But Leto's like, you know, you didn't recognize him, but I didn't teach you how to do it. And like, you know, so I'll kind of let it slide. And Maneo thinks that this may, this attack may be a distraction from another plot, you know, and, and, and Leto's like, well, that's good. I'm glad you're still thinking. Like, I'm glad that you're not so bummed that you kind of fucked up that like, you can't like still think about like what's going on. And, uh, and the Leilaxu, they, they did this because they think that they are ultimately safe because they make Duncan Golas. So they think that like, hey, if we win, great. We kill the God Emperor, party time. But if we lose, what's he really going to do about it? Because we make Duncans. And so like, he's not really going to like wipe us out because then like, who would make his fucking Duncans? And, uh, <laughs> and then Duncan asks him, well, are they right? I mean, is that true? Like, would you, would you really not like wipe them out? And he says, they approach being wrong, which I think was a really great way to say it. They approach being wrong. Like, I would still fucking kill them. 
Um, so Leto's like, all right, everybody, replace the dead. Uh, we're going to have to fly in some new people. Everybody's got to get fresh uniforms. Okay, all, the, all of our fish speakers, nobody's going to look sweaty. Nobody's going to look like they've been in a fight. Uh, all the courtiers, you know, if they need fresh shit, uh, get a replacement bubble for my cart because there's some holes, laser gun holes in it. Don't let anyone know that it's from a laser gun. Just say, like, it's from wear and tear or whatever the fuck. Like, just go get the thopters, have them bring some new shit, have some bring some new people. Uh, and we're just going to walk like nothing happened and it's going to be, it's going to be great. And, uh, Duncan's like, well, didn't you know that this was going to happen? And Lita's like, well, the face dancers and the Lilaxu are just so beneath me that I don't even bother to like look in on them. I don't even notice them and I will continue to ignore them because I've got bigger fish to fry. Like, I'm not going to use my prescience to like monitor these fucking dildos. Like, I don't give a fuck. Uh, but this this whole stunt has has shown me that they're getting pretty desperate i mean their desperation levels are pretty high so maneo's out there he's <laughs> poor maneo he's out there telling the courtiers wrap up your mourning uh i know that some of your friends and family have died i know they've been killed by face dancers uh, but get ready to put on your happy face we're gonna keep marching we're gonna go to on and you just gotta be you're just gonna do this we're just gonna do this okay so you're gonna stop you're gonna stop this we're gonna do this okay so because otherwise Leto's pretty fucking crazy so like you know you know how crazy he is so just like you know stop with this let's do let's see more of this less of this more of this and uh and so they, uh, Leto receives word also, like right after the attack from the Bene Gesserit, he receives the word that there's going to be an attack on them. And he's like, oh, they're a little bit late. No, <laughs> it's a little late for this fucking thing. But they do say, well, the Bene Gesserit tried to tell their fish speaker guard, but the fish speaker guard like wouldn't believe them. So it's really not their fault. And so he's like, okay, well, okay. So tell the Bene Gesserit they're still last. I'm not going to change that but tell them that the last will be the first okay so they'll understand like they know the bible they'll, they'll know that so just tell them that so they don't have to like be stressing on being last and uh he's like well what about the leiloxu and he says cover up the attack let's publicly flog and expel the ambassador without presenting a reason and uh you know when we reach on unscathed they will just they will know that they've utterly failed they will believe that they've just utterly failed if we show up just like partying like nothing fucking happened you know which is a really boss move i mean it's a really fucking boss move <laughs> like honestly and um maneo uh he tells maneo that or no he tells maneo to tell siona in a fragile way she is like that force within me that acts without knowing because of her i remember what it was to be human and to love and when he's talking to Maneo, he, Maneo notices the courtiers are wearing all these little eavesdropping Ixion devices where they're just hanging out, you know, but they've got some like, like amplifier on their ears so they can just kind of like listen to you a little bit more, um, which he's like, oh, you know, like they really shouldn't be doing that. And like Ix is like really like not cool. But at the same time, Leto's using all this Ixion shit. So I really can't tell them like it's not cool if like Leto's doing it, you know, it's like you can't really do much about it. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of big worm energy totally in this chapter. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> the, the, the fucking naked Duncan was just, and then, and Leto like rolling over people in his cart was just totally priceless. So good. Uh, chapter 21, the Royal Entourage arrives in on. So they finally make it to the city by mid after mid afternoon. There are tons of people lining the streets. It's like a fucking parade. All the fish speakers start chanting, Cyanoke, Cyanoke. And everyone who isn't a fish speaker doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. And everyone's like, oh, that's, I don't know what that means. It sounds really serious though, you know, but okay. And Maneo is thinking about the time where, you know, he was asking Leto. He's like, what the fuck is Cyanoke about? Like, what is that? And Leto's like, okay, I'll tell you. But like, don't tell the fish speakers I told you because they really don't like dudes to like know about any of this. So just like zip it. But I'll tell you, he says that Cyanoke is Leto's, his one ritual. He's like, this is my one ritual. I give it to the fish speakers. It's the feast of Leto. It's the adoration of my person in my presence. So I let these ladies worship me. We hang out, they worship me. It's a whole thing. And the word Cyanoke means giving honor to one who speaks with sincerity. 
It signifies the remembrance of things which are spoken with sincerity. It also contains the idea of light as that which reveals reality. It also stands for fermentation because the belief that you know reality sets up a ferment in the universe. It also contains a summoning to prayer and the name of the recording angel Sihaya who interrogates the newly dead. And it's a lot. It's a lot. It means a lot. Sayanok means a lot. And he was like, that's a lot of shit for one word, you know? And to Mineo, the word Sayanok means mystery and prestige. It means power. It invokes a license to act in the name of God. And Duncan asks a fish speaker about it. Duncan's like, what the fuck is Sayanok about? And she's like, it is not a word for men. But sometimes the Lord shares a Sayanok with a Duncan. So, you know, if, if Lita wants to let you in on it, he might, but it's up to him. I'm not going to tell you shit. And then we learn about the city of On, Festival City. It's mainly used as a Lido convention every 10 years. So they have the big Lido convention and that's its one primary main purpose. I mean, that's really, it's just a big giant convention city. And uh, it's one primary purpose is public viewing of the God Emperor. So it's built around the entire deal of just seeing Lido. And when it is not, and again, this is only being used once every 10 years, they have their Lido convention, Lido Con. <laughs> Lido Con once every 10 years. And when it's, when all the other years, uh, less than a 10th of the city is being utilized. So for like most of the time, nothing's going on there it's just totally deserted nothing's going on they but the only things that are there are some of the embassies uh the fish speaker school is there some trading offices some museums libraries some maintenance shit uh but it's mainly just like nothing and there's a plaza in it that is like one and a fourth mile across with and there's like all these apartments and like all around it um, and it's all like built up to see Leto. And Duncan is just like, as, as his guard, he's like, bro, this is a real big security risk. <laughs> like, why are we doing this? Why are you like, there's all these balconies and everyone can like look down on you and like, wh what? Like this, anyone could shoot at you or throw a thing at you or whatever, dude. Like this seems like a real big security risk. As your security guard, this makes me really fucking nervous. And uh, Leto tells him that he promotes this myth that this city, and it's, it's not true, but there's a myth that in this city there used to be a ruler who would walk among his people in darkness uh, and all the people would be shrouded in black, but the ruler would be wear this luminous suit. And also none of the people would be screened for weapons. So... And if he survived, so if, if this ruler, if he was a good ruler, he could do this in the middle of the night, walk through all these shrouded people, wearing a luminous suit. And if he was not murdered, that meant that he was a good ruler. He was a great guy. But if he was killed, then obviously he, like, people fucking hated him and he sucked and he didn't deserve to be around. And so Leto promotes this myth because he's like, obviously, he's like, I'm not going to be killed at these things. So, like, if I continue to do these things and... I present myself in front of my people and then I'm fine. Then that just means that I'm a good ruler, you know, like it lets people know. Uh, there's also in the middle of the plaza, there's a presentation stage. Cause he's like, well, like Duncan's like, well, how do you, how do you get on the stage? Like, how do you get on the plaza? And he's like, there's a presentation stage that rises from the center of it. And then I pop out, I pop out of the middle <laughs> like this, like a cake. I just pop out. And, uh, and he asks, like, well, are people, do people cheer for you when this happens? And he's like, people are permitted to cheer. Yeah, they can, they're permitted. They can cheer if they want, which I thought it was cute that they were permitted to cheer. And, uh, and Duncan muses, during this meeting, Duncan muses on Sion and he's like, I must, I must learn more about her. And Lido says, I assure you that nothing will get in the way of that desire. <laughs> like, which I thought was really funny. Like, how, like Duncan just has no idea that all Lito wants him to do is bone Siona. You know, he's just like, please, like, just, you want, what, what do you want to know about her? I will let you know. And, um, 
And so, so on this peregrination, they finally hit this tunnel that goes like underneath the city. And apparently there's a city underneath the city. It's only for fish speakers and courtiers and Lido and like Duncan and anyone else down there has to have an escort. And so there's like a whole other city underneath this city, which is pretty crazy. Uh, I love I love the imagery of that and it's huge too like these huge fucking tunnels and these huge spaces so Leto can go down there in his cart like no problem just rolling around um, and so let's move on to chapter 22 to woo a god so Leto he's seeing everybody he's having his little appointments and he's, he's having his meetings with everybody and it was noted that Leto spent more than the allotted time with the new Ixian ambassador, Hui Nuri. And other people noticed. They're like, what is he? It's past the five minute mark. Like, what is going on in there? <laughs> like, what is going on in there? And I love the description of this room. There's, we don't get a ton of descriptions of things in Dune. Uh, Frank Herbert really likes you to, you know, use your imagination. But in this room, there's these really great old Fremen tapestries that are like these this rusty, you know, old red color with these fine metals and jewels, you know, worked into them. And then the floor is this like mostly transparent floor with these crystal fishes, little fish worked into them. And there's a stream flowing underneath the floor, which is excitingly near Lido because we know he doesn't like water, but he's just like, fuck it. Like, I'll have a water floor. Like, I'm just crazy crazy like that like I'm just crazy like that and he's sitting at the far end of this room like on a little dais and he's uh Queen Marie comes in and he notices that she looks a lot like her uncle Malky who again used to be an ambassador uh and the Ixium ambassador she's got dark skin she's got brown eyes she's got brown hair she's got a regular oval face you know she's not like a She's not like a, a stunner, you know, she just kind of looks like a regular, regular lady, but she radiates an inner peace, which it's, she's so fucking peaceful that this, that this energy about her radiates its influences all around her. It just spreads its influence all around her. That's my goal. That's what I would, I would love to achieve that, you know, where you're just like, you're just so, you have such inner calm and peace that like you have a bubble of it and wherever you go like it just it just radiates off of you you know that's what she's got going on and she seems timeless to him like she she seems like she lives outside of time in this deeply peaceful way and she is the epitome of goodness the epitome of goodness this woman and Leto immediately knows that Ix bred Hui Nuri to charm him uh, he know he sees it right away. He's like, oh, I know exactly what this bitch is supposed to do. Like, I get, I see you, Ix. But despite knowing that essentially she's an Ixian trap, he's having a good time with her anyways. He's just like, man, this bitch is like, who is she? Like, I love her. She's great. And uh, he also noticed that she's she's lightly toasted with a little Bene Gesserit teaching, but not too much, not too much. You know, she's just so open and honest and and the, 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 the most that the Bene Gesserit teaching was able to do was to get her to lie, only if lie to the extent where she could save someone's feelings, you know, like, but that's just like, that's it. It was just a real light touch. And uh, when they're talking, uh, she does reveal to him, she says, one cannot always depend on hearing truth from one's associates and superiors because he confirmed something to her that was told to her. And she was like, oh, OK, well, that's good to know. You know, like I didn't know if that was true or not. One cannot always depend on hearing truth from one's associates and superiors. And Lita's just like, oh, girl, that is such a that's funny. Like, you're funny. You're right. It's true. Oh, uh, Yeah. They discuss Kobat, the previous ambassador, and Leto surmises that they really just wanted the Duncan dead because he, he's like, the, the Ixians already tried and failed to kill me with a laser gun. Fun fact, 
the person who tried to kill him with a laser gun and failed was one of Queen Nuri's ancestors. And he does, he is like, you know, I killed one of your ancestors, right? And she's like, I know, but he tried to kill you. Like, what? Well, that's crazy. Like, it's water under the bridge. Like, he's an idiot. I don't even, I don't, I'm not even stressing about it. So, like, don't even worry. And, uh, he also brings up to her that he's like, well, I know Ix has a colony that's planted far away. And I know your people thought I wouldn't notice, but I did. <laughs> I noticed. And she's like, I, I thought, I told him you would. I told him this was a bad idea. I said, hey, he's going to know, guys. Uh, and he's just like, wow, what? She, I'm so tickled by this girl. He starts uh, musing about her. He's like, starts really like, he gets quiet. and He starts like thinking about her. And she's just like waiting very patiently while he muses on the Ixians. And he admires the beauty of her stillness. She's just able to just calmly sit there. And he's just like, it's so rare. It's like he never is able to find someone who can just sit and chill uh, in front of him without getting nervous. You know, he just makes people nervous. I mean, he's a fucking worm god. Like, of course, like people are going to be kind of nervous around him. And so it's like, wow, how refreshing that this woman can just chill and not be weird around me. Like, ah. Uh. <laughs> and so uh, he just asks her straight up, have, how have they prepared you to woo me? Like, he just lets her know. He's like, I know. I know. I know you're here to woo me. And she's like, well, they gave me some lines, but I'm not going to use those. Like, it's fucking lame. And um, he's like, tell your masters that you're precisely the right kind of bait to dangle in front of me. You, you are it, girl. Like, you did great. And she says, if it pleases my lord. And he says, yes, you do. <laughs> oh, snap. I was like, damn, daddy. Like, oh, yes. You do. You do please me. You please me very much, lady. He peeps into her future and her past. He's like, hold on. Let, let me, let me. He, he does a fucking little, little prescient peep, peep show. Like, you know, when you meet somebody and you go look at their Instagram and their Twitter or whatever the fuck, you know, like looking up their shit. He's doing that. And, uh, and like, you know, he's, he's like, it's kind of weird. It's a little hazy. He's like, I don't know everything's coming up there she's got a weird liquid future could go in a lot of different ways her past is a little muddy to me uh he asks her how old are you and she's like i don't know i might be 26 nobody ever nobody ever told me um and he says that uh you know you were maybe conceived within a machine that the ixians are creating which is the no room that we talked about in session one uh, you were maybe, you were born, maybe even conceived in a machine that I can't look into. Uh, and Malky may not be your uncle. He could be your dad. So I'm not sure yet. It's a little weird, but you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. And tell Ix that I know what the fuck that they're doing. And uh, I don't care. You are to be the permanent ambassador uh, and if they try to replace you or recall you or whatever the fuck, I'll crush them. Tell them I'll fucking kill them all. <laughs> like, like, you are it. You're here to stay. And that's it, dog. And she's like, I tried to tell them that you would, like, you would say this. I tried to tell them to be good, but they're just so crazy. And he sees her as this idealized nun who is kind, self-sacrificing, sincere, open, truthful, outgoing, sensitive, naturally sweet, responsive, wholesome, good at listening. There is nothing openly seductive about her, which made her profoundly seductive to Leto, which I was like, oh yes, I can see that. And another fun fact we learn, Leto has phantom body. So, you know, you've heard of phantom limb where you have like an amputee and they no longer have their, their arm or their hand and yet they can still feel it or they, they report that they can still feel it like, oh, my arm is itchy and it's driving me crazy because I can't scratch it because I don't have an arm or, oh, my hand hurts, but I don't have a hand, you know, it's a whole thing. He's got phantom body and he can feel his vanished human body within him that includes his dick uh you know he may not have one but he feels he feels it you know he knows 
And he feels his brain, which again, isn't there, throbbing. You know, it's like where his brain would be is throbbing, even though he's just got weird ganglia now. And he moans in despair. Why do your masters torture me? And we is like, Lord, and he's like, by sending you. And she's like, I would not torture you. And he says, just by existing, you hurt me. And she starts crying and it's like, oh, it's so sad. These two, these two. Uh, he's like, go, get out of here. But if I, but come back, if I summon you, get back here quick. If I, if I ask you to come back, you just get back here quick. But like, go, you've got to go. And, you know, Hui is feeling it too. Like she's feeling the fucking connection that they would have been friends, lovers, companions, and an ultimate sharing of the sexes. They would have just would have been the perfect couple if Leto had a body, but he doesn't. He's a fucking weird worm guy and he doesn't have a body and it's really sad and they can't be together in that way. And it's just, it's just torturing them both, you know? And it's really, it's cruel. It's cruel and it's sad and it's very tragic. And he thinks back to Malky and, um, you know, he was like talking shit about the Ixians to him. He's accusing the Ixians of being dickheads. And he's like, he's like, Lord, you know, Lido, like you're one of our best customers, you know, like, what are you talking about? Like, you can talk shit about us all the, all fucking day if you want. But you are one of our best customers, so I don't know, man. And uh, he also tells him, you like me because I'm terrible. Like, you like me because I'm terrible. I'm crazy, and that's why you love me. And Leto, in the same way, he loves Hui because she is good. She's like the exact opposite of Malky, whereas Malky was this fucking rogue. She is just this fucking kind, beautiful, wonderful woman. <laughs> So let's move on to our final chapter of this session, chapter 23, the flogging. <laughs> so we have the Lelaxu ambassador, Duro Nunipi, and he is taken out of the announced order. He is jerked out of line for an early audience. And uh, Duncan's hanging out there for the audience. He's got his Lay's gun in position beside Leto. And uh, Leto, man, again, he just starts fucking with this guy heavy. He's like, I find shape changers profoundly obnoxious. And Nunapi is like, but I'm not a face, I'm not a face dancer. And he's like, yeah, but you represent them. And that makes you an item of annoyance to me. It's just like, fuck, this guy's so fucked. And uh, he's like, what about your Dunkins? We make you Dunkins. Don't you love your Dunkins, man? And uh, he's like, hey, Duncan, if I asked you to kill all of these motherfuckers. If I asked you to destroy all the Dleilaxu, would you do that for me? And Duncan's like, with pleasure, a hundred percent, no problem. I will go right now. Like, what do you need? And uh, Nodipi's like, oh, fuck. You know, he's sweating it pretty hard. And Leto makes up some pretense on why he's mad at the Dleilaxu because he's, again, he's burying the face dancer attack. He doesn't want anyone to know about it. So he's not going to bring it up. I mean, Nunapi knows about the attack and he knows that's why he's being grilled, but they're not going to fucking, they're not going to talk about it. And so he, he brings up this excuse, which totally throws the ambassador off. He's like, it has come to my attention that you and your people have been spreading lies about what you call my disgusting sexual habits. I have no sexual habits, none. Okay. You got to hear about this. It's none dog. And uh, he's like, oh no, forgive us. Like, oh God, this is terrible. And he's like, of course I forgive you. That is your God's function. You are, your crime is forgiven. However, your stupidity requires a response. So no spice for the Lilaxu and 50 lashes for you in the plaza right now. Fish speakers, take him away. And as he's being dragged out, the ambassador says, I wish they'd killed you. And he's like, who? You wished who killed me? <laughs> I love that shit. Who? I don't know what you're talking. What? What? Uh, don't you know that I can't be killed? You know? Ah, fuck you. And Duncan's like, this is such a bad idea. Like, this is such a bad idea. And he tells, uh, he's like, bro, this is not going to end well. 
And Leto's like, look, membership in a conspiracy, as in an army, frees people from the sense of personal responsibility. And I'm teaching these fools a lesson in personal responsibility, okay? This guy, somebody's got to, I, I got to give myself something here, you know? I, I lay back. I let people say a lot of fucking shit and do a lot of dumb shit. I got to give myself one. I'm giving myself one. I'm, I'm just teaching these fools. This is a hard lesson. And Duncan's not getting it. Um, he's just he's just on the struggle bus today. And uh, and he, you know, Leto asks him, are you incapable of listening? And Duncan says, I have ears. They're right here. Uh, <laughs> and then Leto says, uh, I can't see them. I don't see them. Because, uh, you know, they do not hear. Therefore... You don't have any ears. And, uh, like, sorry. You know, and I just, he's such a fucking dick to everybody. Uh, he's like, no, you don't have any ears. You, you obviously can't hear. So I don't see what you're talking about. And Duncan, he keeps trolling Duncan until Duncan just gives up. And he's just like, I don't understand you, my lord. I, I don't get it. Like, I just, I just don't get it. And then he tells him, that is the beginning of knowledge, Duncan. The discovery of something we do not understand. <laughs> Which is just like the ultimate. Man, he's just fucking heavy with people in this session. And so he's like, hey, let's watch the flogging now. Let's stop arguing. Let's watch the flogging. Turn on the TV. Turn on the, turn on the screen. They turn it on. Uh, Nyla, she's showing up. She's still masked. She's got her fucking her mask on executioner style and she's got this whip and she's like whipping this fool but she's like going too hard like she's going ham on it and Leto's like fuck man she's gonna kill this fool in 50 lashes and like I don't want him dead like that's gonna cause a problem so he tells them uh, stop the flogging after 20 lashes uh I'm, I'm being magnanimous uh just you know like have them just stop at 20 and uh you know I'm teaching them a lesson no one is permitted to blaspheme against the god emperor Dung's just like, okay, but nothing's good Good is going to come of this. And uh, Leto says, precisely. Bring on the fuckery. Bring on the fuckery in our upcoming session four. Session four. So for next week, you need to read pages 227 through 307 in this book. And if you're reading from a different book, you need to read to the last sentence of the last chapter is leave me now he whispered leave me now he whispered very dramatic very very dramatic and thank you every i know leto's so feisty in this one he's so feisty in this one it was really fun this was a really great session and uh don't forget to support this channel when you join patreon.com slash Danica XIX. If you love these book clubs and you love our videos, we would love to have you as a member on Patreon. And also support this channel when you order merch from Big Cartel. Uh, Big Cartel. So we've still got some some Dune packs. So you can get your God Emperor Leto thing, and, and you get you know we've done this a million times, but we're just gonna keep doing it. <laughs> you get your little pack. You get your deal. Where's the fucking keychain? You got your key, your Doom Club keychain. We got this Doom Club keychain. It's really hot. And then we got this Lido's Peace Enamel Pen. Woo! So you can order those as well on uh, Big Cartel. BigCartel.com. And uh, for those of you uh, who want to get involved in the questions and answers and, and see those, you can watch that on VOD on twitch.tv slash DanicaXIX. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Goodbye. Mwah.